We talked to Moses Rodriguez, formerly of the Merit's Office, and community activists about his journey to the states and the challenges that lie ahead. You know, we're talking about Black History Month, and then, um, you know, we made the comparison the Haitians and Cambodians is the modern day uh, Italians and Irish, how they moved into this country. And, um, Cambodians and Haitians specifically, um, but this episode we're talking about Cambodians. There's really a, a tight knit community where I feel like you guys have invested in your own restaurants, your own stores, and really have made a, a community in itself right here in Brockton. As you said, um, the Cape Verdean community tends to be a little close knit because, um, with the, if you look at immigration, how folks immigrate, chances are, in order for you to legally immigrate into a country, you have to be petitioned by someone to come into that country. And the only way you can petition somebody to come into a country is that if you're related. So chances are, uh, you know, it's kind of funny how sometimes you hear people talking about our community, how everybody's related. In reality, it is kind of true because only family can petition for families to come. So when you come to America in a legal venue in the sense, in a legal way, you have to be related to somebody in order to come. So once you come, you somehow continue that whole, um, that whole close-knit you know, mentality, that close-knit community that brought you from, from back home into the new land. So you continue to do that just as you would have done it back, back home. And that's what's happening in the, in the city of Brockton and in some of these other communities that are, are home for gay birds. What got you involved, you know, not only am I gonna pay attention to my family, which is most important, but also the, you know, the, the Cape Verdean community in general? Well, uh, I came to this country as a teenager. And, and when you come as a teenager, I came with, you know, I was surrounded by my parents. My uh, great, great grandfather worked on the Bourne Bridge back in the 30s. You know, so my family has been in this country for the, for the longest time. But we lived in Angola for quite some time. And then once the, the war broke out, the civil war broke out in Angola back in 75, that's when my parents decided to uh, immigrate into this country. But my, great, my grandparents had already been here for, for several years. So I was lucky enough to come surrounded by that family support in a sense where I wasn't the main provider of my family. I was one of the, well, the oldest kid, but I was just a kid within that circle of friend, uh, a family which allowed me to go on, go to school, join the military, do some things in this country, and then felt the obligation to come back and do some things to help my fellow uh, countrymen in the sense, to try to, to try to get them, because I've always been a believer that if you're gonna live in this country, you better learn how to speak the language. If you're gonna live in this country, you better know the, the ways in, the ins and outs of this country. Because there is no true American uh, I mean, sometimes we often confuse uh, uh, the issues of Cape Verdeans and uh, the Irish, and, but there's no true American. If you look at, even the Native Americans came from somewhere. Because we come from a, a variety of places and different uh, countries and sides of the world in a sense, we, we've joined this great land called America and we are constantly evolving. So I've got that mentality that in order for you to come and live here with the rest of us, it's important for you to learn our ways, the American way. The American way, which means it has a little piece of the Italian way, the Irish way, the African way, the Haitian, the Cape Verdeans way, you know? But it's important for you to come and learn the way of the Americas. Where do you see Cape Verdeans, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now affecting this community? As long as we don't let some of these kids who are running amok and, and tinting the, the heck out of our name everywhere, uh, you know, these kids doing some things in the community that's not really our way of life. Uh, I think we'll become as the, the Irish and the Italians and some of these other communities have become in this country. Uh, the longer we have been here, the longer we have matured into the American culture and society in a sense, I think we'll adapt in the same way that, you know, we'll go by the same. I mean, I'm sure if you go back to the 30s and you ask the Italians that, they would say basically what I'm saying to you right now. And that's basically what I see because the, the bulk, uh, the vast majority of Cape Verdeans uh, immigrated into America as the country became independent. Because you gotta remember, Cape Verde was part of the Portuguese empire. 
until 1975. So although, as I said, my great-grandfather came here, he came here as a Portuguese person from Cape Verde, you know? So he wasn't a Cape Verdean. You know, he was a guy that was born in Cape Verde, but he, wasn't a, he, he had a Portuguese passport, you know? So we became known as the people, the Cape Verdeans, after 1975, when the country became independent, that it had its own identity as a nation. So that's why it seems that we just got here. But in reality, we've been here for the longest time. But the vast majority of Cape Verdeans that actually have come into America have done so since 1975. Um, do Cape Verdeans consider themselves black, African-American? What do you consider yourself? I consider myself a black man. Uh, I consider myself a black man. Um, but I think it's important for us to make a distinction that there's a, there's a, there is a distinction between black and African-American black. Um, because a lot of times you hear, especially from the, the African-American community, uh, stating that, you know, Cape Verdeans somehow uh, try not to associate too, too much with, with, with black Americans and things like that. And that's not necessarily true. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't a handful of Cape Verdeans out there, just like there's a handful of Haitians, a handful of whatever, that will not associate with a certain group of people. But the vast majority of Cape Verdeans consider themselves black or Negro. You know, because we come from Africa. You know, we live in the African continent. We come from the African continent. Now, when we come to America, we are black people from a place called Cape Verde. So when we become Cape Verdean, when we become Americans in the sense, we become Cape Verdean Americans, black folks who are from this place called Cape Verde. Uh, we're not per se, because I look at African Americans as an ethnic group, not as a race. If you say to me that we're gonna stop calling black Americans African Americans, then we're all in the same pot because then we become black people in America. But as long as you call black folks from America African Americans, then there's gotta be a small distinction between African Americans, Cape Verdean Americans, Haitian Americans in a sense because um, they come from a specific place, you know, Haiti a black or a Negro place. Cape Verde, a black or a Negro place. So they're black from those places, but not necessarily black from America. Last question, what do you want your legacy to be? 50 years from now, 100 years from now, we're all dead and gone. Or maybe actually, yeah, 50, I'm 120, maybe I might make it. You're definitely not gonna make it in 100 years. In 50 years, I'm not gonna make it in 100? In 100 years, you're not gonna make it. 50 years, you might. There's a very good chance that I'm not gonna be around. <laughs> I want to be known as a person that came into this planet and left it a little different than the way I found it. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, I'm the Bill Gates of the world or you know the Oprahs of the world that donate billions of dollars or whatever into uh, certain programs, but within my means, I was someone that actually did something for mankind. Um, something for a neighbor, something for a child, something for an elder, uh, elderly person, something for this country, you know? Uh, I want to I want to be remembered as someone that uh, did whatever they whatever I did above self. I want to be remembered as someone that actually uh, left you know this planet a little bit better than I found it because I was able to do something progressively to help my fellow human beings.